Welcome to Brain Squeeze Reactions, myself, Mark Hector. What are we reacting to today? Week two of Tupac. Uh, this is the extended week. This is the extended week. Uh, so this is going into the second week of Tupac. Uh, the, the first week has been crazy. I mean, some of the songs that I've listened to are just mad. And if you're new to the channel, uh, Sunday is my day of rest because I can't be recording 24-7. literally can't be doing that. Normally Wednesday is as well. I take a Wednesday and a Sunday, but I batted through because there were so many songs to try and react to. But we're on week two. We're on week two and I'm continuing this journey because I fucking love it. It's been so good. The education that I get, um, uh, the comment section has gone mad and I've kept on top of that as much as I physically can. Um, we, we've made a good dent in the list and I'm hoping that week two we can make an even bigger dent. Um, I'm hoping you enjoyed the music that I released uh, yesterday for Sunday. So although, although I don't do reactions, I try and drop something in there. So at least there's still videos ticking over for yourselves to enjoy and watch. So let me know what you thought about those. If you haven't watched them, go, go have a look at them now. So how are we going to start this week? Well, we're going to start it a little bit subtle. We are going to start it subtly because one of the, the main thing that keeps coming up on the comment section is reacting to interviews with Tupac. And everyone keeps asking, everyone keeps fucking asking to go through the, the interviews with Tupac. So I thought, you know what, let's start this week off just like that. There's an interview with Ed Gordon, which is the one that keeps getting requested for. So I'm interested to see, and it'll be nice to hear Tupac without the rap insight. And, and it just, just hear how he engages, how he speaks, try and dissect that as we go through. But just generally learning and listening to what he has to say. So I I'm really am interested. I won't edit anything out. So some uh, reactors, I know that they edit out the interview. So they give you like chunks, the best bits. I don't do that. Uh, a, I can't be fucked and that would take ages. And B, this is just something like a podcast I have playing in the background. So it's going to be really good for me to listen to this, listen to what he has to say. Uh, God knows what he's going to talk about. I don't even know who Ed Gordon is. Don't have a fucking clue, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to find out. Uh, as always, comment section for uh, education. Here it's not going to be bar breakdown, so that's going to be interesting. But there may be some education of things that I don't get, things that he might be talking about that I don't have no fucking clue about. If he's talking over past history and he's referring to it as if we should already know that, make sure that you put it in the comment section. Comment section is not for hate, so fuck off. Um, another exciting thing as well, I'm starting to dip into merch. You are going to see some stuff coming soon. So you're going to see some stuff coming soon. I'm going to get the community involved in this as well. So I'm going to come up with some ideas as we move forward. But I've got something good to start us off. So it'll be interesting. You have to let me know your thoughts on it as and when I finish uh, uh, dealing with it and it comes through. So I'm excited to share that with you. There's so much that's going to be happening. There's so much that I can't tell you yet as well, which is even more exciting. Uh, but that's a long way off yet. But just some stuff that, that we've got planned. Say we. Say so some stuff that I've got planned that is going to be amazing. So anyways, let's jump into this. This is... Tupac Ed Gordon full interview so it's 24 minutes fucking hell it's going to be like a day uh, but hopefully a lot of this is just going to be me listening to whatever the fuck they're talking about let's go with and it says with with all questions introduction and all missing parts that's interesting the million selling rapper is praised by many for his socially relevant raps like keep your head up a salute to black women who aren't getting support from black men on the other hand he's criticized for his gangster image he's a budding young actor who has been praised by movie critics as someone with real acting talent yet with all this going for him many say he's risking it all you see Shakur is also a young man in trouble with the law he faces numerous charges across the country. Among his legal woes, he served time in jail for assaulting a movie director that fired him from a project. He's apologized for that one. He's been involved in a shooting incident with an off-duty police officer. And in October, he faces trial on charges of sodomy. Okay, so I, I know a couple of bits on this. And that's only from your education, which proves the point why... That's so important to know about it. So with the police thing, wasn't it something to do with um, that they they had guns or, or, or something? Or they were trying to plant some, something, something like that. The sodomy one, so that, that ended up getting dropped. Wasn't that a rape charge that, that was towards him? I didn't know about the movie director thing. And if he's apologising for that, and that clearly took, took place. But obviously, just in the moment, that's probably all it is. And the fact he was being fired from it as well. But I'm sure the one with the police officers, there's more to it than, than what they're making out there. Proves how fucking terrible media can be sometimes, where they twist that without adding the narrative. I caught up with the popular rapper in his friend's bookstore in Atlanta. 
We started our conversation by talking about why he feels he can impact today's youth with his work. I have something to offer to business that hasn't been shown before. You know, I have a whole energy that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth, youth. You know what I'm saying? That, that, um, that change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um, my audience empathize with me because I show that side. I show that emotion raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um, more funnel, more um, directed into screenplays, more albums producing, managing, you know what I'm saying? If I it's amazing when you just listen to what he just said there, when he's saying about, in, in his term as well, when you're like 18, 19, that there's no responsibility in just firing. But then his version and the way he's had to deal with it, he then says, oh, then when you're 20, 21, the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. It just shows you how much he had to mature so fucking quickly. So in his eyes, within literally a couple of years, he's had to change from being this irresponsible person to being responsible because millions of people are expecting from all different cultures as well. And it's nice to hear this and see him talking. He is clearly a very, very fucking intelligent individual just by the way that he presents himself, the way he articulates as well. It's really clear. Uh, he knows what he has to say and he knows what he needs to say, but equally, he doesn't have to think too much about it. That just screams character. Into screenplays, more albums producing, managing. You know what I'm saying? If I can um, figure out just how to control it. I can, uh, I can use it on a lot of different levels. In fact, it is that raw, uncut energy that Shakur brings to entertaining that has won him a legion of fans. I wondered how he's handling this pretty heady stuff at the tender age of 23. It's 23. It's amazing. I'm, I'm almost more in awe of the people in awe of me than they are of me. You know what I'm saying? I trip off because it happens out of nothing. It just goes... You know, everybody just be screaming and happy, and I just I, I get uncomfortable, and I, it's like it's like um similar to a deer being caught in the, in the headlights. I just freeze, you know, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should um be what they want me to be, or if I should make them hate me so they can stop, you know, like say something mean so they can just stop. But I, I'm often I'm just like caught in the middle of it because it's, it's you can't. It's, I mean, no one can do that. Police can't do that. They can't stand in front of all those people and control them with a gun and mace and all that. So me with just words, it's like a, um, a battle to find the right words to say at the right time. I'm, I'm curious, when you, when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over... Okay, can we talk about his collar? Because that's really fucking annoying me. <laughs> I know it's got nothing to do with the interview, but what? the fuck is with that collar um so what i loved about him there was uh the bit obviously th these were some cut bits that's why it went a bit blurry so he's saying about him being in awe of people being in awe about him type thing um and that's crazy that that he's thinking that because that's how the the, the past week's been for me just being in absolute awe of of someone that's educating me a culture that i'd never understand if it wasn't for him making the music i would never understand that but then he's making a good point when you've got all these expectations people coming out at you not even a full-scale police can deal with that you know with the mace and the guns and, and etc what he's saying but he's a one-man army that's got to deal with that when you think about the idea that you do have that kind of control over so many people uh in in one sense the whole idea of being a role model comes up in the imagery and a lot of people who know you and i talked to them beforehand suggested that hey you know, when you meet him, he's going to be something entirely different than you imagine hmm. and what the media is portraying him. What about that idea that, that you have been portrayed? And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, you like the portrayal of you just hard, That's thug, right. That's right. don't step on me, That's right. you're in trouble. That's right. Yet there's another side to you, too. Mm -hmm. What about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going? Um... To me, it's like, um, it is my sensitive side that, um, that likes to blow up the hard side. Because if my, if, I can, if my image or my reputation can stop a confrontation before it happens, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my, that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, 
they look at it as something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it, and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me, when they first see me, to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job, to humble myself, to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat, unless you're a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, when you meet Pop, he's different than he is, because when somebody one-on-one, -on -one, anybody one-on-one, -on -one, I believe, honestly, that I can talk. I believe that I have the ability to reason, I have logic, I have compassion, I have understanding. If we talk, there's no problem. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happens. People use what they heard in the media, and that's how they come at me. And then, you know, we got to clash. One of the things that you read... Mm, see, that's interesting what he's saying there. So he's saying about his... He has no problem with engaging with people. But again, it's this media narrative. You start saying that, you know, he's attacked people, he's punched people, he's done... He's got guns, he's got this, he's got that. Then, then people are always going to be cautioned. Well, when when they're coming at him, depending on what they're coming at him for, I, I, I don't. I suppose even fans would as well. But what I'm thinking about here is he's got to deal with that. So what he's saying is, just talk to me. I'm knowledgeable. And what I like what he's saying as well is about not not falsifying, not 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 going with that narrative, but being who he is. And I think that's key. I take loads from that. I used to try and play the game, be the character that they assume you're going to be. And it's stressful, stressful as fuck. And it got to that point. And it's only recently in the past two years where I'm like, fucking take me. Th think about here is the YouTube. Take me as you find me. I, I, I used to, I would have given a shit. And I honestly would have changed so much to try and fit the expectations of what people want from you. But that isn't the right way of doing things. That causes stress. That fucks everything up because you're trying to be something that you're not and your brain doesn't understand. So it has to work double time and that creates fucking shutdown. That creates stress, hypertension, suicide, death. That's what, that, that's what it creates. Read a book, learn about hand sealer around stress. And, and when you start being in a situation where you can't be yourself, that's constant fight or flight every single day. Think about when you go to work. Think about when you go to work with people that you don't like, but you pretend like you do. And how knackering that is and how much you want to get out of that. That's fight or flight kicking in. That's a constant cave person DNA. Kicking in constantly trying to assess, 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 be something, be something, be something, be something that you're not. And you're not relaxed. That, that, that's how you die quicker. So this man is a genius. In the media is that you're angry. Yeah, and that's how they come at me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we got to clash. One of the things that you read in the media is that you're angry, that you personify your generation, that you just got some angry folks out there and you're one of them. I'll put it to you. Are you angry? Are you angry with what you see society is about? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely angry, confused. You know, um, a lot of the times that I sat up in court, I couldn't defend myself, you know what I'm saying? And it, was, it wasn't like the things they were saying about me were beyond my comprehension or um, the things that I could say weren't going to help my case. But because, I mean, I was, it's like being exiled, you know, from, from society. And that's how I feel. And this whole um, the anger comes from I'm tired of waiting for my past to get into society. All I ever wanted to do was make um, me and everybody around me feel more comfortable about where we were. You know what I'm saying? About the places that we stay. Where we, this is our home base. Let's build it up. Let's be happy about where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to assimilate and um, get a pass key to where they at. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that everything needs to be separate, but we got to find pride in ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once you get the pride, like damn near two seconds after the pride comes anger from being held like that for so long and to be made to go through those changes, you get mad, you know what I'm saying? As soon as, I believe as soon as any black man receives his first three checks, he starts getting mad. Because it's not about the necessity of having to have a job and having to pay and having to do that. You don't care no more about the smiles and the, you know, yes, my son, because you didn't got paid, you know what I'm saying? And now it's like you want to save money, you want to help other people. When you see how, how far it is, how far you have to go to help anybody in your neighborhood. It's set up for me when I get paid for me to exit the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? The only reason I've had these problems is because I haven't left yet. And these problems don't come from a white man. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Fucking hell, unpack this. So what he's saying there is that 
by the time that you you have money, you have money, and it's at that moment, right? Okay, I need to now because because you're head head focused, you're head focused, you're you're trying to get your money, and what he's saying is after your third paycheck or whatever number you would give. So what he's saying now, he wants to turn around and start helping people, and it's only at that moment when you turn around and have a look at the environment, which is what I was saying before about the environment. But you turn around and look at the fucking environment that you're in, that then you realize. A, you can't help everybody. So that's what he's saying. He wants to turn around and help. And now it's the 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 how big the problem is in society. Or, or, or he's referring to... Um, well, he, he said it's, it's not to do with just the color of your skin, but he's saying around the whole society. But I think generalizing, that's what he's referring to, is turning around and having a look at the situation for what it actually is because he wants to turn around and help people. But now it's like, fuck, where do you start? And that's where you're seeing all these issues and where you're seeing all these problems, which was exactly what I was talking about around where you've got like cops that would that that would and currently is that that will shoot someone based on the color of their skin think about what that does to an environment think about how that that is for both uh, uh, other police in the force does that become an education thing that that yet that you're now more likely to shoot someone because the color of their skin but thinking about the people on the return value of that the ones that constantly looking at their skin thinking oh i need to go walking down there but there's police over there there's a potential that they're going to frown or just look at me different and potentially that i'm going to get shot every single day even though you probably know you're not going to the fact you have to think about it i don't need to ever do that you know, and, and that, that that creates a huge difference. And what he's talking about here is he's turned around looking at a society again or the environment that he's in. And he's suddenly realizing at that moment that he can't help everybody. But how big the problem is, that's why he's angry. Uh, anger, anger comes from unresolved issues from the past. And, and that that's exactly what's going on. The first stage of anger is confusion. So when you're turning around and you're confused on... A, I can't help everybody, so there's a frustration there. And B, confused, how the fuck did society get into this state? And and I think that that's exactly what he's referring to there. And that's where the anger comes from. But nobody wants to look at that root cause. No one wants to dig any deeper. All they're looking at goes back to the media coverage. They look at Tupac being angry. Without any education or any backstory, it's quicker to say that he's angry because he's done X, Y, and Z. What, four things? What, what's all the other stuff that he's done that you can't be asked to look at? Interesting. And these problems don't come from a white man. It comes from just society, the problems that we have. Let me put this to you. A lot of people tell me, Tupac is, for the most part, a nice guy. This old thug thing, hype. Hmm. Good for record sales. Mm -hmm. uh, helps him identify with the young people who are out there and angry, who would maybe label him a sellout like they did Hammer if he didn't mm -hmm. have that hard mm -hmm. side. What about that? First of all, nobody could call me a sellout. I'm not, I'm not going for that. I'm not even in that. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not looking for approval from the black community because we don't give approval. You know, we don't really do nothing but exist. So it's not like I'm, black people could tell me, you a sellout or you true blue. You know what I'm saying? It's not that. I'm not even caught up in that. But um, I can see that, you know what I'm saying? The one thing we do have in common as black people is we share that poverty. So the thug side is more closer to the poverty than me being rich. You know, how can I come to any community center, you know what I'm saying, sporting a, a Rolex, presidential, all these diamonds, and be like, look, we, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> gotta, gotta. <laughs> but now, when I say we, they know what I mean. I'm not saying like, I live in this neighborhood and nothing, but I'm a thug, and they thugs. They can relate to I don't even have to say that, you know what I'm saying? When I come, I don't have to say I'm real. They already know that, you know what I'm saying? From, from me, from me being me, from not pushing the thugness, but I know from the business that everybody in this business is always whispering in your ear about what you can't say, what you can't do, what you can't wear in this world and in mm. this world. It's two worlds, a white world and a black world. All I did was stand in the middle, you know what I'm saying, and, and say I'm, I'm living in these, I'm living in both worlds. I, I can go to the streets and survive and I can go out here and do my business out here. Um, and that's that's really interesting there so just let's so he's so articulate as well i love the way that he engages himself who is this interviewer so he he holds back a lot like if you're going to ask a question just ask a fucking question he's he's almost uncomfortable so i mean if you look at that that whole thing i don't know who he is but there's definitely an uncomfortableness when he's, there's nothing uncomfortable with tupac whatsoever he's leaning into the conversation he's in it and he knows what he needs to say 
very articulate and very, very clever. I don't know who this Ed Gordon is, but his questions feel scripted. Just ask what's in your head, man. Um, so with with uh, Tupac's response there, he's saying he's in both camps. So people saying that this whole persona of being a thug, and I just like the way he's articulated with having the money, and he can't he can't just go into a place and go, oh, we need to do this, that, and the other. <coughs> when you've got, you know, a multi-thousand pound Rolex on. But what he's saying is that he has done that. He has been in that situation. Sorry, a bit of food just got stuck in my throat from previous. Um, <clears throat> so he's been in there so he can relate. It's the relatability that he's talking about there. And I think that's important because... <clears throat> Two bugs is saying he can be in both camps because he understands. He's been on both sides. <coughs> Play devil's advocate again. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped by the record, record executives who will allow you to do your thug life because it betrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contracts you have. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make your platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody to be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because... If you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at the <laughs> white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, mm -hmm. when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what the white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't going to be, you know what I'm saying? I just got to, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not the, that's not the crime. That, that, that's amazing what he's saying there. So he's saying about everybody's getting pimped. So I like the way he totally rejected that. So he's saying, yes, he is, because everybody is. So, like, stop trying to define it like, like I'm being forced to do this. Everybody's being pimped. And now that my voice is back and go back to that point I was saying before, where he is in both camps, and that's what he's referring to, where he's talking about both sides of the coin, that he, he knows what he's selling over here, let's say to the... He referred it to white and black, so... He knows how to deal with that. That, that to me, is almost the business side of things. That he knows what he can do and influence from this side. But when you when you turn and face the the black community, as as he's worded it, that's where his thug side comes out because he can relate better with that. Um, and this whole point that he's making that everybody gets pimped. So he's not denying that he's not been pimped from a record label because I'm being pimped now. I'm using a certain certain camera, a certain mic. Uh, I'm on a certain platform of YouTube and, and they're going to take all the credit for this and they're going to take the, the money. So we're constantly being pimped. It's just then um, what he's saying is the power that he has in his message. So yeah, yeah, I'm being pimped and I'll take that flat. But when an album drops, now who's the pimp? How bigger is his scale? He might be pimped by one, one, one little area over here. But when you're selling multi-million albums, you're pimping the world, is what you're doing, and you're influencing their next conversation. Who's more powerful? Who's more powerful? The record company that's pimping you based on this factor of money, and they own that. But he said people are whispering what you can and can't say, and he's that's where his thug side comes out. He says, "Fuck that! I will say what what I want to say, and I'll release what I want to release." And it's only after in passing, people have started to change his songs because it got he wasn't here anymore. So people were telling me, listen to the OG versions because the newer versions, it cut a lot of stuff. But when Tupac was there with the originals, it wasn't being cut because that's not how he does things. That to me is the thug side versus the business side of Puck. And he knows both of them. He knows it because he knows the influence that have the minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be pimped by the record company side. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. I'll be pimped by that. But he knows that his thug message will be put through that album and everyone can relate to that. And those who don't relate to it are listening to it and passing that on. Do you know what I mean? That they're being educated by someone they're looking at like a teacher. I just think he is fucking super clever. You work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not the, that's not the crime. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to mm. come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, work it to the top. Yep.
I asked Shakur about his feelings on people like New York minister Calvin Butts and the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who have been critical of Shakur and others for the gun-toting image many young rappers have. There's nothing criminal about bearing arms. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Only the press and the media make you think that a black man arming himself is illegal or criminal, or that he wants to arm himself to rob a liquor store or something. You know what I'm saying? That is for me to defend myself, and it should always be. It's just about surviving, you know, and we have to be honest about the tools that we use to survive. And why is a black life um, any, any more recoupable than a white life? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We know that they don't put the same security in the ghetto that they do in the, whites, in, the, in, in the white neighborhoods. So therefore, for me to be out here saying don't, you know, put your guns down and no violence. That's hypocritical. And if I didn't talk about the violence, everybody would act like the violence wasn't there. We, as rappers, bought that violence. We, we bought the, the violence that we've seen on the street. We put in our records. Put in our records for years. And after three, four years, people first, finally starting to see it because of all the statistics that's going on in the streets. If we stopped talking about it, then they wouldn't take statistics. And when they stopped taking statistics, then we'd be killing each other in the street and these white people wouldn't care no more. Only, people they, only reason they care is because, you know, there's been some strays and we done slipped over in the white neighborhood. And there's kids in Iowa that want to be like us. You know what I'm saying? There's kids in, in Indiana that's trying to be like us because they can relate too. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly what he's saying. So if you think now I'm 36 years old, I would not know any of this if it wasn't for um, listening to Tupac music. I would not be talking to, to anyone in this Tupac community the way that we have been and educating and learning and trying to understand if, if I hadn't listened to Tupac. But, but what's interesting is how frustrated people were getting when I extended the Tupac week, uh, but make it weeks. And I may make it three. And I'm starting to not give a fuck about that because now I'm starting to listen to him and I'm thinking, is that, is that what I'm seeing in the YouTube when people are like, oh, I can't wait till you go back to Eminem. Someone even wrote, oh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. You know, when I said I'm going to do the Tupac, uh, it was going to be NF, but but that changed. And Kendrick Lamar. And someone went, I'll see you in three weeks. It's in the comment section. I can't remember the fucking videos. You have to go find it. But it's definitely in there. And he said, I'll see you in three that, That's basically, oh, I don't want to hear that shit. And I think, ah, oh, how many other people assume that? When there's this debate around Eminem versus Tupac, regardless how you feel about it, and stay out of the comment section with your bullshit, just listen to me. When, when there's the, that, I just think, is that because people aren't listening? To the point he's making that if he didn't bring this to life, we wouldn't know about it. Or, or if rappers didn't bring it to life, we wouldn't know about it. I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't know that's taking place. The only thing you're going to hear is the stray bullets. So suddenly, going back to my point with the environment, if the only thing in the media that's being published is a stray bullet that kills a white kid or a stray bullet that kills a white family, how are you now portraying that? And what will you then be expecting from the police force when in that? Shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. But that's no different where he's saying, and now suddenly you see a black a black man or or, or someone uh, 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 with a gun who's black, a uh, black black man or whatever, and suddenly you're frowning. But how many white people have got guns in America? And they say it's to protect themselves. He's saying the same thing. I've only got this to protect myself. Yeah, there might be more of a, a thuggish behavior that goes with that, but that's just called culturally. And it's only built from the environment that he's in. So he only would portray it in that way because of that environment he's had to survive in. It's just called education and trying to understand why people portray themselves that way. But there's some people that just can't be asked to read between the lines. Their education comes from media. And media is cutting half the story out. You even admit it. I don't live in that neighborhood anymore. Mm -hmm. There's no real reason for you to carry a 9 millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? And the Ridiculous question. Ah, I'm not saying I don't like him. I don't know who Ed Gordon is, but he's just, just something about him just, just seems shifty. Um, and I know comment section can say he's a wonderful man. I'm telling you, I study people for a living, okay? I don't care what he's done. I don't care who he's spoken to. I don't even care that he's done a two-buck interview. I'm just telling you how I see it. This man is absolute 100% genuine. That question is pointless. I mean, think of who he is in his backstory. Of course he's going to need protection. Of course he is. L look, at, look at how he passed. Look at the fact he got shot. Like, it didn't matter what, what area he was in. He was in Las Vegas, for fuck's sake, w when he got shot. Ah. You know what I'm saying? There's kids in, in Indiana that's trying to be like us because they can relate, too. You know what I'm saying? 
You even admit it. I don't live in that neighborhood anymore. There's no real reason for you to carry a 9 millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? In, in two years, I've had a gun pulled on me by my limo driver, by police, by everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I better be. I better be. You know what I'm saying? I've been attacked. You ain't read the papers about these skinheads trying to blow up black churches. Why? They see me as the enemy just like y'all do. You know what I'm saying? They can come to my house and sit outside my house just like anybody else can. A skinhead. And once my life is gone, it's gone. Can't nobody give it back to me. Not the judge, not the president, not the governor, not Calvin Butts, not Jesse Jackson. They can't do nothing but come to my funeral and talk pretty about how black people suffer. You understand? And as far as Jesse Jackson, my first acting job was at the Apollo Theater when Jesse Jackson was running for president in 1984. It hurts me for him to say anything negative about any rapper because we supported him. He should support us. You know what I'm saying? As far as his image, you know what I'm saying? What was he? What was he doing? You know, he should be the last person talking about gun violence when he sat right there while Martin Luther King caught one in the neck. You know what I'm saying? It, it, things ain't really changed that much. I swear to God, nothing I ever say is meant to be um, something where innocent people get hurt. Nothing mm -hmm. I ever say is meant to be like a end all, let's go do it right now. <laughs> nothing. Everything I ever say, and if, if, if any, this is so we can set it clear, anything I ever say as it pertains to, um, to, to my peers and, and, and um, being strapped is only in self-defense. You know what I'm saying? Because my, right now where I'm at, the world is harsh. And I just don't got no beautiful stories. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be getting them ready. Because that's why I think I messed up. If somebody would have grabbed me, pulled me to the side, and been like, look, Tupac, as soon as you step out here, they're going to be at you. If somebody would have explained it to me, I wouldn't have took the same mistakes. But I made those mistakes. And that was my job to stop somebody else from making those same mistakes. Mm. To lay it out. To lay out the real map on the world. And I oh, this dude, man. This dude is just... Fuck, I can sit and just listen to him. So again, trying to dissect this, which is what this is about. But what he's saying about is he lived that. He lived it. He made the mistakes. That there's so much here to try and try and reflect upon. So he lived it. He made the mistakes. So what he's doing is trying to reflect that through his music and and his discussions to create that map to ensure that no one else takes that same mistake that he did. Because if he'd have looked at it from that point of view, he would have understood maybe a different way to approach this. But you know, I, I, I don't think he, he could ever have changed that, if I'm being honest. To make an impact, you've got to piss people off. It's interesting, Sam, about whoever Jesse Jackson is suddenly changing. Now, there was an interesting um, discussion that I had, and this is... You need to listen to what I'm saying here and be exceptionally open-minded. So this was done by a very good friend of mine called Eugene, who's black and understands the whole community and ethos and he said there are some people that are still positioned in a way where they're pleasing others um and he was saying so this jesse jackson should should from what he's seen and, and from what tupac's just articulated both understanding you know at the very beginning of there understanding a rap culture seeing how dangerous uh any side can be and the fact that you know guns be, being everywhere it doesn't matter who you are and, and martin luther king being shot I, th I think he got shot and, I, and i'm taken out from what tupac said but this Jesse Jackson, he's almost, I'm guessing, has found fame or whatever it is that he does. Governor, I'm guessing politics or whatever he is. I don't know who he is, so don't attack me. But whatever he is, he's got to a point now. And now he's he's playing f the safe card or he's being whispered to. And as opposed to like Tupac where he's ignoring those whispers because he's got morals and values that he follows. What's actually happening now? This person is having his values shifted. Otherwise, he can't get his greed. I <coughs> Otherwise, he can't get to what he wants. He can't get the direction that he's headed. So what he's doing, he's being influenced by these messages because that's the only way he's going to get his status. And it's a status thing, but he's being pimped for the wrong reasons where he's now changing his value system. I'm talking about this Jesse Jackson. He's changing his value system to 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 gain his greed to gain to gain this but that's being controlled by another that's someone being a pimped that's that's someone being someone else's bitch is what he's saying there even though he knows everything that's happened he was there with tupac or he was there as tupac's articulating he was there with martin luther king or he knew that and he, he, he could see that his whole value system is fucked because it's either greed or he's he's still being controlled by others 
and it's mad because when I was talking to Eugene about this, it was so. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean true, but there's a bloodline, and it and it was linking back to uh, slavery. And again, I don't I don't know anything about that. I'm only going from an education point of view. But there are some people like Tupac, and rightly so, who is fighting that and being like, "Hell no, that's not what's happening." Who understands his position? Who's looked at his environment? Who's educated? And so are thousands of others that have started this whole movement and 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 moving through that. But I still that one or two. DNA is in a system. If you systematically approach this control mechanism, that will become part of someone's DNA at some point. It will. It's the reason why through a bloodline people can be killers and you pull that bloodline back and you find a killer from years ago that's part of their, 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 uh, I don't know, uh, uh, relations. Like, 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 I don't know, great, 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 great granddad. And it's filtered through to that moment and bang. So if you think there's a generation where people people were controlled through slavery and that type of thing yes you're going to have those that that come through with a fresh dna and change things but there's still going to be one or two that's still controlled by a whisper still controlled by what what fear is and it's an automatic thing your brain is worked off its amygdala which is this survival coding which is why when a car's coming at you, you dive out the way but if there's going to be some influence that's heavy I mean, it's a tough subject to talk around, but this was so articulate that there are going to be some people that still hold that DNA where they can easily be manipulated because that's what was taking place. But then there's other people like Tupac that that, that have come with a fresh DNA and they've educated quick enough to ensure that, that that old DNA, or maybe it was part of the movement when things started changing, that his DNA is fresh. That's dangerous. N n dangerous positively because of this and i'm telling you that's the reason why fbi police and people like that started cracking down on that because what you're going to create is a new dna you're going to create a new survival instinct that says fuck that and you tell me that's not happening now a new generation of people what's that influenced by it's, it's only happened now. How long's is Tupac? you got to think sometimes it, it's generations. You're talking 10, 15 years for that DNA to start changing and becoming a different different bloodline, a different feed. It, you've only got to come from this generation. There's a few people listening to Tupac that are influencing the next generation through good DNA, good thinking, new ways, and going, no, I, I won't do that. No, I won't be controlled that way. Fucking next level. Fucking next level. And again, I, I'm, I'm not offending from that. I, I hope you're taking it from an education point of view. And that was shared with, say, a good friend of mine, Eugene, and, and a really good friend of mine. And I haven't spoken to him in such a long time. I just remember this discussion. Because uh, we always talk about people. And, and I've always been interested in culture. Uh, Mama always said I was born the wrong color. Which is crazy to, to think this when I'm listening to Tupac. But I think it's more just being environmentally aware. I think it's just I'm so environmentally aware and be, listening to this culture, I still remember as a kid being influenced by that culture. And now as an adult, more mature, I'm more educating about, as opposed to just being interested, I now want to know and feel it. So whoever recommended this interview is an absolute legend because what I'm starting to see is the difference of Tupac. The, the difference of him versus whoever this Jesse Jackson is. That Jesse Jackson has been influenced poor genetics and everything's built of genetics everything's built of dna if you don't believe in evolution get the fuck off my channel read a book and that evolutionary dna that instigates that we're built of tribal instinct remember so we are built to be in tribes and silos we are built that way that is the way that it's always been so you're going to have tribes of people that behave differently that is genetics led and and tupac's genes were just that starting block and I just think, how many people did he influence, man? Whew. And how it is. And how it is for Shakur yeah, is trouble. It's continuing to mount. He was just thrown off a concert tour for allegedly inciting a riot. Shakur claims his actions are just misunderstood. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming here telling you my plight, and then I walk outside and live the good life. Everything I'm saying is a warning, is, 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 is a plea for help. If everybody is so goddamn worried about me, why ain't nobody came to help me? You know what I'm saying? I never wanted to be no star. This ain't my job. I don't care if everybody don't cheer for me. You know what I'm saying? If you're not cheering for me for what I'm doing, don't cheer for me. Don't cheer because you think I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? Screw that. Cheer for me for what I'm doing, for what I stand for. And when I go to jail, you should cheer louder. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm standing up for what I do. I'm not robbing nobody, not stealing from nobody. I never took nothing. Everything I do, I do to represent my people. I do because I think this is what they want me to do. Shakur says all the attention given to... 
I love that. Don't cheer for me because I'm cute. Cheer for me for the message because that's what he's doing. And, and every song I've listened to so far has had a message. Okay, there, there might be a few. He's only human. So let's not let's not forget. And I get he's in. He's here and he's more in that re relaxed, educated mode where, where he's really portraying it. I think one or two songs he has attacked. But he clearly stated before he's only ever done that in retaliation. So he's only ever done that when it when it's happened to him. That's called fight or flight survival. We've had that since cave person eras. Eras that doesn't change. You start attacking someone, then I'm going to attack you back. I do because I think this is what they want me to do. Shakur says all the attention given to his mishaps are one-sided. This is all I want to say. For all the people that doubt me, I had no record all my life. Okay, no record, no police record until I made a record. As my video was debuting on MTV, I was behind bars getting beat up by the police department. I got a $10 million lawsuit. They, they said they were settling with me and everything. You know what I'm saying? But nobody cared about that. That one blew up all in the news. In they Oakland. didn't see me. They did not see me on TV with my eye busted, my head busted. There's pictures of those. In Oakland, you don't see, you're talking Yes, about. in Oakland. You don't see them pictures. You see pictures of Tupac coming out of jail and cuffs. You don't see pictures of the police standing over me beating my brains in. You don't see that. But I see that. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? So it's all real. And, and I, I feel like, just like a woman that's raped, any woman that's raped would never, ever allow herself to be raped again. Am mm -hmm. I correct? Mm -hmm. Any woman that's violated would never allow herself to be violated again. Same thing. You know there are going to be people who sit here and say, how can you say that when you're faced with that charge? That's in how I can say it. We got people in my own community that will get me. Why? Because I got it. Now, this girl, who I can't say her name, but if I was to say her name, a thousand all over the world would go, I put this on everything I love, on everything I love. When I was in Atlanta, I was pulled over the gas station. Some dudes from New York pulled over next to me and told me the girl's name. I said, they said, I know the girl that did it. They told me her name and where she's from, say she's scandalous. I can't go on TV talking about this girl, because that's what they want me to do. Mm -hmm. They want me to get on TV and talk about my black sister is a hoe and she's a B-I-T-C-H and she ain't she a money grubber. I ain't fist to say that. I don't have to do that to show that I'm innocent. You know what I'm saying? I'm not guilty. People should look me in my <laughs> eyes. They should look me in my eyes. If anybody that thinks I committed that rape should go get Brenda's Got a Baby and keep your head up and listen to him thoroughly. I mean, fuck. Okay, so I, I need to dissect some stuff here that's really pissing me off. Nothing to do with Tupac. This interviewer again. What Tupac just just portrayed, what Tupac just portrayed, which is around um, just before he got to the, the the story where he was saying around what what his life's like. The first thing that this person said, well, he was talking about being beaten. Sorry, I had to try and remember what he was saying. So I take it. Talk about being behind bars, being behind bars and beaten. And no one said that. The fact he didn't have a police record, the fact that his face was busted up, the fact that nothing was done. And then then he made reference to it, obviously, like like a woman being abused. And then... And then, um, you know, it wouldn't happen again. And he's saying the same thing. You, you abuse me. That's not happening again. It's never happening again. The first thing that this dude did was refer to that. Hold on a second. The first thing that I would be doing is discussing that. As, as, as uh, This is the, the, the thing with media, even in an interview, no matter how much respect this Ed Gordon's got, I don't care. Because his first question should have been, fuck like 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 you, you you were beaten talk me through that who did that how many were there why did they do that the fact they paid you afterwards let's start reporting about that my next move is to remind people that that happened my next move is to blow that story wide open to start getting people to maybe understand what tupac's saying this is the first time i've heard this interview he would have heard the songs that tupac's released the same as me i've only done it for one week and i can connect those dots i can connect those dots to to know that what 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 power tupac has got i can start connecting i know i'm part of the community he should be doing much better and in his position as someone that can report and influence his first influence away from this story should be go back and and and, and show to people that he never had a record go, go back and let's 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 review why he was beaten let's see why it fuck the 10 million that they paid i want to find out why 10 million at this moment probably means nothing to tupac so I'm just interested that the first thing he did was, was almost scrape for another story where he was almost shocked. Like, oh, you're currently being held against this 
bullshit rape charge, which ended up, I think, being thrown out anyway. But he's, he's got an answer for that. And he said, like, look, just the way you articulate, you can't articulate it as smooth as he's just done with that much passion. So you could tell it's nothing to do with that because then he starts bringing his songs to it. Like, how can you even think for a second that, that I did that or that I went that way? But his first... His first analogy was was to pull him up on his reference point he's saying about someone being attacked will never be attacked again. I don't get that. I don't understand that. To me, that's madness. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing for, it should not even be to me. I go, people should look me in my eyes. Mm -hmm. They should look me in my eyes. And anybody that thinks I committed that rape should go get Brenda's got a baby and keep your head up and listen to him thoroughly. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing for, it should not even be to me. I have no um, patience for anybody that doubts me. None. At all. It's too hard out here. You know what I'm saying? If my people don't stand up for me, who is? I understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me. They didn't hear keep your head up. That ain't no fluke. You know, keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh, come up. I didn't do that for to be smiling in my face to say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't about that. Mm -hmm. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out of my mouth. You understand me? Because it's a struggle on young black males today. See, I'm telling you that Tupac's talking at him in that moment. Just reflect for a second. Folks looking at me like that because they don't know um, patience for anybody that doubts me. None at all. It's too hard out here. I, d I just want to reflect on oh, what he yeah. said. has got a baby, and keep your head up, and listen to him thoroughly. Perfect. This. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be. Not it was hard to imagine that you would do that. To him thoroughly. It was hard to imagine that it you would be, do that. It shouldn't be nothing. It's hard to imagine that she would do that or you would do that. Doesn't matter who he's referring to. There's still an air of doubt from this person. I don't know whether legally he has to do that. I don't understand. No, I don't know. You're probably going to rip me in the comment section about this dude, but I just know people. It's just something. He's closed off. Look look at his leg cross. That's a closed off. So, okay, so so many things about people, so I'm going to be very, very quick here because it, it, it's unfair. So, uh, whenever someone's delivering, you'll, you'll know that they're honest by their openness. So, uh, open gestures, uh, nothing hiding in front. So, so the minute that, that someone holds something, it's like a like a thing so so what you would do you'd hold that in one hand uh your cards and your reference point uh safety is there a pen in his hand and god knows what his leg is is crossed as well just that, i don't know it's just something about him i'm just uncertain of i don't think there's belief in there and then after he said that tupac then starts talking about obviously he, he's he's almost like portraying his innocence but he said i expect that to come from someone who's white i expect that i expect him to read that just like i said before about the environment but what he doesn't expect is people within his own culture looking at that especially if they've heard these songs he's referring to one which i don't think i've done keep your head up uh, so i definitely want to do that song now but he's referring to that song he's like if you've heard that then you should know because he's obviously talking to women i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gathering keep your head up so we're saying like don't look down but but then it's, i've heard this this message in a couple of other songs as well so he's saying how can you say that when when you know the message that i'm trying to do and deliver and 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 i just got this thing he's looking square at this dude and it's almost like how can you someone like you question that's taking place J just the vibe and for it should not even be to me because 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 tupac's demeanor changes you know he had he had complete control over what he was saying there was a there was a nice tonality and almost like he said he's on two sides of this coin so almost now we're starting to see this bit more emotional side coming out now where tupac's like hold on a second where he's almost like justifying himself but he's annoyed that he has to if you hear he, he's <sighs> thuggish i was gonna say but but that that thug side that emotion side is starting to creep in swearing more that, that that's a clear sign where it's coming out emotionally uh the, the words he's using his whole demeanor is changing but he's his eyes are locked onto this dude as he's talking just shit you've got to look at man i have no um patience for anybody that doubts me mm -hmm. none at all it's too hard out here you know what i'm saying if my people don't stand up for me who is yeah i understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me they didn't hear keep your head up that ain't no fluke you know keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh come up i didn't do that for to be smiling in my face to say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't about that. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out of my mouth. You understand me? Because mm -hmm. it's a struggle on young black males today.
Shakur's childhood plays a large role in the man he is today. He grew up knowing little about his father and just recently mended his relationship with his mother, who was an active member of the Black Panther Party. He says much of the pain and anger he brings to his work stems from his background. Have you ever seen, what would a Vietnam vet be like without a sergeant, without any backup, without any other soldiers, nobody but a Vietnam vet in Vietnam, when he came home, how would he be? And that's me. I had to go through all that street war, everything, the same drugs that everybody else get turned out on. You know, where I would have been stopped short, I made it pass. And here's where I am. But because I made it pass, I missed some lessons. You know what I'm saying? And you can see the lessons that I miss when you talk to me. You can mm -hmm. see where, where I haven't had a father when you talk to me. You know what I'm saying? You can see where I spent a lot of my time in the streets when you talk to me. Because the words that I say are not words that come from a mother's mouth or a father's mouth. It's words that come from a pimp's mouth or a prostitute or a hustler or a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? But to me, these were my role models. How much of that, though, in terms of growing up without a father, sometimes not being with your mother, do you, do you lament on and look back and say, damn, I, I missed something big? Everything. I, um, I know for a fact that had I had a father, had I had someone, and I hate saying this because white people love hearing black people talk about this, but had I had a father, had I had some of these opportunities, I'd have been able to help my mother more. She wouldn't have went the road she went. I mm -hmm. could have been a better son. You know what I'm saying? She wouldn't have went that road. It was the absence of my father. You know what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him <coughs> being daddy not being there. My mother's dealing with him being my man not being there. You know, so many problems in our community that, that um, affect everything. So by me not having that, I ain't never want to hear nothing about no kind of relationships between a black man and a black woman. I knew they didn't work. Because as far as I knew, my daddy was the coolest dude out there. And my mama was a panther. So if they didn't work, it don't work. That's how I felt. You know what I'm saying? And going out there, you know what I'm saying? It's like watching my mother just go through changes and everything. It's like my mother's my partner. She a soldier. You know, she a soldier like I'm a soldier. You know, and I, I watched the, the peak, the game that she went through. If I, I would have went the same way my mother went had not she did her route and showed me which, where it went wrong mm -hmm. with her. My mother always told me, don't you ever, ever just um, volunteer yourself to our people because they'll use you. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? She, never, she also told me to uh, follow my heart and for me to be the leader. But it's interesting. Okay, so my, my, head's, my head's light bulb in and I, I, I didn't want to pause it because what you're saying is, is so smart there. I'm starting to think that some of the reasons why from not having that influence, as much as he, he say, he, he say like he wish he did and, and he could have helped, but he's saying it referred to it would have helped his mum more. So I think it's just more about getting his mum through that. I'm thinking it's because of maybe some of this older influence of an uh, older generation. And again, going back to my point around some people that can be easily swayed, although they give it the give it all the big un, whisper in their ear, and they're bitches. You know, there's so many rappers now that are being influenced that way. That that oh my god. Okay, I can't dissect that. I can't can I? Yeah, fuck it. Let's just I'm gonna attempt it. So what I'm saying here, so I'm gonna talk very, very quickly so, so I can get to the point. So What's basically taking place is some older generations, older heads, part of a different DNA system. It only takes one of those to have a weaker mindset that then would share that weaker mindset with their children. So it could be, oh, make sure you listen to people as opposed to follow your heart. Make, make, make sure you just follow what you're told. Make sure you just do what you're told. Make sure you just do this, do that, do that. That creates a weak generation. That creates a weak generation. He didn't have that. So his dad, although he might have been amazing, his dad equally could have been that, where he's instigated from that. Oh, yeah, yeah, fight, fight, fight. But what he's really seeing from his dad is being bent over and shafted every opportunity so that's what it would create he didn't have that influence he just had a mother that was a black panther fighting the right message so his early early doors was was creating this 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 soldier as he refers to it a soldier that's trying to trying to ensure that a, a, a black community is seen exactly the same as anybody else equal measure equal measure if not more and rightly so um and, and it's about it's about that's how he was raised. So if there was another influencer there being a father and a son would look up to a father that's not as powerful as what his mum is doing, that may have put a damper on him. May have. And I'm only talking, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with what he says. He, he's referring to if he had a father, could he help his mum more? So that's the only reason he's linking that. Now, if you think about current generation, like we've, we've got this generation now they're doing Black Lives Matter movement, not the ones that are doing it based on emotions. I'm talking the educated ones that are doing it properly because of, because of the reasons and everything in between. So they understand why logically it's not right. Similar to like Tupac, he can do emotional, but he's also very logical. 
what's happened is now is that suddenly it's creating this this wealth music's being instigated again oh so 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 music is being the main factor in this movement definitely 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 music is a huge factor that 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 took a culture we wouldn't have known about which is what tupac said and being brought to life what's now happening is with this same culture and i'm talking color of your skin notice what they're rapping about is there many with with as much power as what Tupac had talking about the actual issues? Or are we too busy talking about uh, uh, sexifying people? Y y your Cardi B's of this world. Too quick to get your ass out and then say that you you're supporting a culture. Fuck off. Absolutely not. What's happened is you, you're listening to those whispers. And what that does, it starts educating a new generation to be soppy. It starts educating a new generation to not be your, your next Black Panther, to not be your mass uh, movement piece with education that says, no, I'm not going to be there. What you've now got is you're starting to influence a culture backwards where, where, where they're forgetting this stuff, where, where now on YouTube, I get someone saying, I'm, oh, I'm going to shut out for two weeks. Ah, I don't, I don't believe that. I think Eminem is better than Tupac. See what you're doing? You're starting to clash. It's almost using Eminem's platform. So this is where, this is where Eminem should be respected because what he's doing, he's still continually standing up for that black community because he wants that message to continue. But but think he's on his own. The minute he kneels, everyone suddenly gets a bit, well, you shouldn't be kneeling. No, he exactly should be kneeling because he's in the position that Puck was uh, years ago, if not in a bigger position because he's still here. He is, as Puck would be, humongous. The Puck would be well above Eminem had he still been on there, but Eminem's using his platform for the right reason. The only people that I know that rap about things like this, Buster Rhymes, but again, how, how quickly does his album fall along the wayside? I did a, a song with Buster Rhymes where he spoke around the black community and again that was powerful that was powerful and i'm trying to think have i heard another one from a from an influencer that that that's really like top of their game right now no the ones that are top of their game are talking about you know the 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 the, the money the the cars every instagram post you got your fucking tits out you got or you got money in your hand you got this you're educating a generation and th this is why we have only fans and why we have instagram uh, youngins thinking that that's that's the lifestyle it's taking you a back step where, where's the Instagram of people that are fighting to be heard? Where are the ones with logic and education? Where are your Black Panthers, but, but a new generation of Black Panthers, better educated in a better environment, where now that they can keep that going as it was when his mum was doing it? It's almost like they go, oh, we can bottle that. So what we're going to do is start ensuring that those those in that culture are delivering a message that's a shit one. So that that, that new DNA strand is being influenced back to being weak again. In, in a new direction, but but they're, they're not headstrong anymore. They're not headstrong l l like the generation from Tupac era would. The, like the comment section that I read where there's so many people that has so much influence. But because that, that dies... So with it, the message does. And you only have people that Eminem, but he's not part of that culture, so he can't do it with the... He can only do so much, but the minute he does something, like the BET cipher, bang, 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 you, you get you get people attacking that. And what colour? White. Because they, that's not right. That's not comfortable. But they're not understanding. And even sometimes in the black community, oh, Eminem shouldn't be doing... No, 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 he should. You, you should be listening. You should be watching. You should be making sure. You should be making sure that that message continues. Where is our next puck? And you go, there, there, there can't be. Of course there can be. Of course there can be. There is DNA somewhere with that. I've seen it in the comments section. Where is that new generation? I hope that made sense, man. But fuck, like there's so much in my head about that. And I'm starting to think now, think of all the music that's out now. Name me one influential track that's top of the charts right now that doesn't have anything to do with getting your tits out, uh, money, pimping, getting off your face, this, that, and the other. Where is the big track that everyone's listening to? Like, keep your head up, like, like a movement track, like an education about changing culture. Or is it just a couple of tweets that no one's fucking seeing? Is that how you control it? Where you give a tweet where you can only put so many characters? You only put so many characters, you control that media. Instagram, only pictures, so there's no logic behind the pictures. Take from it what you can from a visionary. That, that's what people do all the time. When you're trying to understand people, especially what I do in my field, it's based on pictures and you can start understanding people by how they're commenting. But no one's learning anything. No one's learning anything. You, you bottleneck how people engage w with each other, suddenly the message can become uh, great. So it's not getting out there. Fuck! 
that's next level and if you've actually listened to that and understood that put in the comment section if you've reached this far now comment section for that and tell me if you understand what i just said and tell me that i'm wrong in the sea just to change my heart and for me to be the leader but it's interesting to see just the change in your face, your reaction, your, your, your thought process. And that's all I ever wanted to do, ask my mama. I wanted to go to college. I went to school all the way and was ready to go to college. The only thing that stopped me was money. The time we all, of my, all the kids in my school was writing applications to go to college, I didn't have no lights and no electricity. And that ain't my mama's fault. You know what I'm saying? So when I think back to that, I'm not thugging for me. I'm thugging for my family. I pay all the bills. You know what I'm saying? I, I feed my whole family, wrong or right, I do. And I can't stop. You know what I'm saying? And if thugging is gonna make me a million bucks, because it just got me platinum, then that's what I got to do constantly. And if it makes me feel, because right now, I feel satisfied. I don't feel like I've ever embarrassed myself or my people, you know, and nothing I've done. And yet, no, I got the whole world fear me. You know what I'm saying? At 23. Weighing 160 pounds, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't even started. I haven't even rolled my plan out yet, and they scared. I got the vice president know who I am, the president, every cop in every city, case. you know what I'm saying? And I haven't even started working out a plan. The rapper paints young. It's, it, it's so interesting because I'm 36, so he's saying he's 23 there. So some of the flaws that I can hear, like like especially him saying he needed a dad and, and needs to go to college, um, I think had, had, had he still been here, I just think where he would have been with with a bit more education to actually realize i don't think so because i think that the college system and and the system as it is currently i think would have broke him and i and i mean that honestly you think the system we only we only analyze people's results one way you've got to do a test and you've got to hit a certain percentage you're railroading people to think one way that's all you're doing you're not creating growth only one or two push against that system but no one listens so i'm, I'm kind of glad he didn't because i think that would have railroaded him and started to create this one way thinking and and saying this is how you do things there's only one way to do it follow the book follow the code follow our rules uh, uh this is the only right answer no such thing no such thing unless you unless you're putting a rocket on the moon that says this wire has to go there but even then i would argue that does it even need a wire in the first place can you learn better to create something different that, that that's called evolution okay and if you're railroading down one way of thinking then what happens is is that you don't think for yourself you think for how you've been told so, and again, I just think now if, if he had that, you know, an additional, what have I got, 12 years, and he's saying this stuff now that's blowing my mind at 36, this man would have been somewhere else. That's the reason they stopped him. Young black men as victims and blames much of their plight on others. So I wondered how he dealt with the fact young black men are killing each other in record numbers. Suicide. That ain't homicide. That's suicide. Yeah. We killing time. each other because we killing ourselves. We not when a man when another man. I know. I've been in a position. It don't. It's, not, it's out of our control. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's that. It's that situation when you got. We we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. No. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building. You know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped but to protect yourself. Because you're living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear. Same, they need them riot, riot, excuse my language, I'm so sorry. The same reasons they need the riot hat, the riot jacket, the flak jacket, the double vest, the 9 millimeter Glocks with extra bullets, the tear gas, the mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? So we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. Is your generation the... Ah, mate. If I was given an hour with, with this dude, just an hour, okay, to, to be able to keep that conversation going, it goes back to the point... He's saying it's the environment. Nobody's looking at the root cause for why they're holding a gun. No one is looking at why they have to do that. And what he's trying to articulate there is the reasoning for this. He's trying to articulate out loud why someone is strapped. He's trying to articulate why that they're shooting each other. It's survival. 
Why are you changing the fucking subject? You, you go back to that and you keep asking the questions to go back. Tell me more. L l l like, like, what do you see daily? What, what, what happens the minute you open your eyes? What's your, what's your thinking space? Not just for you, but for everyone around you. How are they thinking? What's the first thoughts that come into your head? Now start asking the question, is that the reason why they're strapped? What's the first thought that comes into your head? If it's survival, no wonder they're shooting because you give them a gun, they're going to shoot. You give someone drugs, you give them a way out but now you create instability you start the yeah you guys were telling fuck you guys were telling me about the fact that they threw guns uh, uh drugs and stuff into a certain area of course they did of course they did that's that that's the first step of control you you fuck the mindsets you fuck the mindsets and create you create uh, uh your own version and you you create paranoia that's what you create. You create paranoia and then you give them a gun. They're already living in survival. Now they're paranoid with a gun. Now they're paranoid with a gun. Now take away their only means for money, their only meaning for earning. So the only thing they can do is continually distribute paranoia, aka drugs. Continually distribute that. Give them more guns. Give them more guns and make it even harder for them. Tax them now. Put 80 pe people strong in a building like Tupac just said. It's 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 insane that this this dude is not asking those questions to keep this going. Fuck. The one that is picking up for where the Panthers left off, saying, "All right, enough is enough." The generation before us forgot about the fight. We're picking it back up. Not only forgot about the fight, forgot about us. Yeah. Yes. And we're picking it back up. But at this level, all we're trying to do is unite. And right now, as a year, we got a million people that's listening. Now we can tell them something. Now we can try to get them that way. And we might lose some. We might gain some. But we would never even have that audience had we not said what was real. You know what I'm saying? And the main thing for us to remember is that the same crime element that white people are scared of, black people are scared of. Mm -hmm. The same crime element that white people fear, we fear. Mm -hmm. So we defend ourselves from the same crime element that they scared of. You know what I'm saying? While they waiting for, to, for legislation to pass and everything, we next door to the killer. We next door to them, you know, because we up in the projects where there's 80 mm -hmm. in the building. Mm -hmm. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better just because we black, we get along with the killers or something. We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood. What is that? Mm. We need protection too. Finally, I want to ask you about something that... What a wasted interview. Sorry, I, I don't care what anybody says. Put me in that seat. I, I'm, this is a waste. This is a complete waste. That whole thing he just said... And he's like, oh, finally, let me just get onto my final card. I'm sorry, are, are, are you on a time frame? Fucking hell, this should have been part one of ten this one to be able to go talk me through that more talk me through the fact that you have to like i said when you open your eyes what are you living next to you're living next to a killer and you have the same mindset as as me if i woke up in my bed now and i knew that there was a killer a rapist or whatever that's living in the room opposite what the fuck do you think i would do I would buy a gun i would protect myself i'd be on constant edge now throw in poverty so now it's survival now i need to eat they need to eat as well. Now throw in drugs. Pressure's getting on me. I need a release. Now we start creating paranoia. Now you have exactly what white people assume is taking place in the hood and things like that. It would happen in the same way. Now we wouldn't be pointing fingers of blame. We'd be sympathizing and finding similarities. But the minute, the minute you could start creating a dialogue that connects to two cultures, now you've got a strong force. There's no verses. There's no he said, she said, they said, we said, uh, uh, whites versus blacks or, 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 or the, the mentality of a privileged culture versus poverty. You've got a huge army that understands. How do you control that? There's no police force in the world that would control that. Not now. Not fucking ever. Not a police force or government in the world unless you started shooting. Now you're shooting at a culture who will shoot you back. Now you've created a war. It's all about numbers. Who wins? We would have the bigger numbers. Keep people split. I hope everyone makes it to the end of this. It's, it's an hour and nine. If you didn't make it to the end of this, 
then I, I my platform's fucked because no one's going to hear what I'm saying, and that annoys me a lot. Someone else asked you in an interview, and I thought the answer was interesting because I think it speaks to you and your generation a lot. Someone said, where do you see Tupac 10 years from now? You said, hey, I just want to be alive. That's real for you. That's so real. I, can't, I made a metamorphosis. I'm a new person today mm -hmm. because I used to strongly and honestly, honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. But now I cannot die with people thinking I'm a rapist mm. or a criminal. I can't leave until this is straight. You know, I'm not suicidal. I'm not, I can't go until y'all really know what time it is. And then after that, boom, it's all over. And we can see, you know, how this shit fall. But that's how it is. And the reason being is because if I can't live free, if I can't live with the same respect as the next man, I don't want to be here. Because God has cursed me to see what life should be like. If God wanted me to be this person and be happy here, mm -hmm. he wouldn't let me feel so oppressed. Yeah. He wouldn't let me feel so trampled on. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't let me think the things I think. So I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Just because I don't have nothing to pass around for people to put money in the bucket don't mean I ain't doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. You know what I'm saying? Because these ghetto kids ain't God's children. And I don't see no missionaries coming through there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing God's work. While Rev Reverend Jackson do his sh up in the middle class and he go to the White House and have dinner and pray over the president, I'm up in the hood, you know what I'm saying, doing my work. Soldy soul, man. Soldy soul. It's just, so he's a reverend. My apologies. So he's Reverend Jesse Jackson. Yeah, I've heard that on one of the songs. Uh, soldy soul. Soldy soul. My fucks. And just because I don't live there don't mean I don't go there. I got to go there because I can't hang nowhere else. If you made it this far, make sure that you comment to tell me that you made it this far. That was incredible. So an hour and 11 minutes, well, however long it takes me to fucking waffle on now. Um, you need to go back and to listen to what I said and really listen. When you're creating an environment of division, that's now, and now I get it. Now, now I totally, now I totally, 100 and 100%, and, uh, nothing more than that, 100% get it. Do, do, do I understand it from a lived experience? Absolutely not. Put me on barely 40%. But when I say I get it, I understand from an educated point of view, the point behind division from what he is saying, from a cultural division. I don't know what it feels like. I can't do that, but I can understand why you would divide someone with this much power. I understand why you would kill someone. And I look at current state of events for how people as rappers are delivering a message. Ask yourself what message is being delivered to the youth. Now rewind back to Tupac era in 94, what message was being delivered to the youth? Who's listening to that message? How influential is music? It's massive social media platform with controls on it massive how, how how do you keep control you distract the world with a tiktok video but you equally control it and you say only one minute or whatever so many that people are going to watch control it with statistics like he said take away statistics nobody cares what do you do on youtube you throw a whole statistics page so you constantly look at statistics and you change your videos i'm gonna make them shorter because people are only watching seven minutes people aren't watching an hour anymore they're only watching seven minutes so now you've diluted your message now your message is only seven minutes as opposed to an hour worth of education Fuck, man. Is it my turn to be shot? <clears throat> maybe. Maybe. But, yeah. That was good. Anyway, thoughts in the comment section, because i got to reflect on that shit. <laughs>